So here I am with Christy, and uh, we've just had a good session. What do you think about? Yeah, tell a little about yourself and your disease. Okay, so um, at the moment I'm going through um, processes in life which are emotionally stressful. And I have in my past, I haven't wanted to face emotions because they were too big and too overwhelming. And I would go into overwhelm and dissociate. So I can see what I'm doing. I can feel in my body what I'm doing now. But the, the fears that I have to face, I'm, my body is, you know, I'm resistant to facing them until I've processed them. So Lillian has spent this last session helping me face the fears and the fears of those emotions happening as well. And a lot of that we found tied up in what values and rules are that you follow unwittingly. So I might be really jealous or really angry with somebody, but it's your own rule that you've made up in your mind and they're not following the same rules. So you, you can't really <laughs> be angry. You can have anger, you can feel anger, but it's not, it's not necessarily um, a true portrayal of a true portrait of the higher truth, so to speak. Tell, tell a little about what do you think that my theory is that Parkinson's is a, both a physical disease and a, a, a thing where you with mind and emotion can do a lot. What do you think about that? I think I've learned from my own body and my own awareness work of my body is that there is no way you can separate mind and body. I mean, you when you dissociate, that's what you're doing. And then you can't feel your body. You can't you don't know what your emotions are, you don't know feeling of pain, you don't know if you're hungry, you don't know if you're wee or you know, it's ridiculous. But once you can come, when I feel my core, when I feel who I am deep inside, then I am able to make decisions based on what I'm feeling as well as what I'm thinking. So otherwise I spend too much time in my mind trying to solve all the problems. And sometimes these problems are actually just emotions that you've converted into anxiety and worry. And it's critical to not lose that mind-body connection because once you're stressed and you've lost it, then you you get more and more physiological stress. So your the old traumas store in your body, and it's not your fault. It's not anybody's fault. It's you have to experience them. You have to experience those emotions to release it. And if you can't experience emotions, then you're stuffed. <laughs> So you have to have both. You have to take care, nurture your body, give it what it needs, listen to it, hear it, learn to listen to it. And that is a journey. I mean, I have to go into myself, I have to ground, I have to be still, I have to feel my toes, feel my legs, feel my body space in space. You know, I have to, I have to hold myself and touch myself gently to actually feel my sensation of my fingers. And then I go, okay, I can do this. And then I breathe and I ground. And so yeah, that's that's quite a lot to say in one session. But yeah, that's where I am at the moment. So so the whole idea that we have as society that build on diseases that are either mental or uh, physical. What do you think about? Is it ever proven that there's this separation in the body? No, no. And I think people are not aware of how. The science, the, you know, the latest updated psychological science that shows that exercises affects your hormones, which affects your emotions, which are, you know, and we need those hormones just as much as we need the food and the other exercise that helps our body absorb and be resilient to big emotions. So it's, it's not one or the other. It cannot ever be one or the other. It has to be managed together in, in an integrated way. And in order to work with emotions, you have to have ex actually experienced them. And that's quite scary because if you haven't worked your way through big emotions and learned that you can you can regulate them and you can carry them yourself, you don't need other people to carry them. But you know, once you once you're able to carry them on your own inside your body, then you'll feel more trusting of yourself. You'll be able to make better decisions like what work should I do? 
what what do I need? What do I need for self care? What do I need for me? And if you don't have those things, you can't make those decisions. And uh, you told me you are a scientist yourself, and you to- told me that when you started your Parkinson's journey, you did the research. Have you ever found a study telling that bind bound no that mind and body uh, was separated? Yeah, I've never, nobody, I mean, people just, I think what's happened in medicine is that there's been silos, like there are in any discipline. There's silos going up around psychological research and neurological research and exercise research and neurology, you know, Parkinson's disease research, and people aren't talking together. And even the Parkinson's patients are creating platforms now for these integrative scientists to be involved. So it's... um. My phone. There's um a definite. There's much more science showing that there is connection than there's science showing there's no connection. And I think that's very good that you state that because that's what the world needs to find out. One last thing: What do you think? I'm I'm talking a lot about body memories. What mm-hmm. do you think about that? You have we have digged down to several of years. What do you think about that mm-hmm. idea? It's, there's literally, a, um, I mean, there's literally books written on the subject, so the evidence is out there. But in my own body, the evidence is very clear to me because I've started noticing when there's an emotion, um, you can usually track it down to somewhere in your body. And the science is, I mean, there is science showing that there are certain parts of our body that store different types of stress, and stress is unexpected breast emotion essentially and so body memories can heighten your your reaction to things which are not possibly as bad as you thought they were so and that's not your fault but losing those body memories or finding ways to somatically get rid of them is, is critical for for functioning you know nicely and integrated in this world and i like to turn it the other way around that it's a one of our superpowers that we can make these body memories because then they help us not to do stupid things two times. So you have a a terrible episode where you sort of install this memory, this experience, and then when you are uh, exposed to similar stimuli Mm -hmm. in, in visual and and sensory, then your body starts to uh, be yeah. fearful or something like that. So you will not go in that direction or together with these people. Yeah. What, what do you as a scientist, is that possible? That's that the... Yeah, I think, you know, what body memories are is like this, like you say, it's a superpower to get you through very difficult situations where you can't react like just like a tiger is after you. You have to consider other people in your environment. And we are a social creature. We don't want to be ostracized. So we often just also associate fear just with the fear of loss of being in loss of belonging or loss of tribe or community or being outcast. And that's a natural normal fear. And often it converts in our bodies into body memory because we can't respond like you know, and animals, we have to respond how society expects us. But it's a wonderful superpower in the moment. But but when it stays there, it can result in chronic, you know, in issues on your body. You don't want your body to store too much of that stuff. You've got to get rid of some of it, let your body get lighter. And is therapy a way to deinstall these? Yes, you have to learn the tools and a lot of these tools we don't have from childhood because nobody knew these tools needed. Nobody knew how to help people when they didn't get these tools either. People aren't even aware of this whole process. So I think the tools and the skills and the knowledge um, is critical to get out. And that's what you can get from Lillian's online course and from her therapy. I think therapy helps tremendously because it's face-to-face, it's connection, and connection is a critical part of some of those emotions that we carry, like shame, like unnecessary shame. That is, you know, we carry that, and you need connection to often to, to fix that.
Yeah, and I help people to interpret these feelings because they are there for a reason. There's mm -hmm. no bad feelings. It's just a matter of you learning to understand how to interpret yeah. them and what to do. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I'm very grateful that you helped me because I'm on my second language, so I need other people to, <laughs> to help me uh, express my ideas and thoughts. Uh, is there a final yeah. thing you want to tell people out there? Um, don't give up. <laughs> Just keep trying, because even if you never get to the end of the journey, you're learning so many amazing skills that help you in life. So that's, that's enough in its own, just the journey. 